In this video, I'm going to why I am not buying the Sony Burana and why I do not think it's worth it. Now, when I'm saying that, I am saying that for myself. Uh, for you, it could be completely different, but I'm gonna go into the reasons why the Sony Burana is not the right camera for me and not worth it for its price tag for me. Now, this camera is getting a lot of coverage right now because it's just recently been shipping. Um, there's some DP friends of mine that I know that I'm getting this camera. There's some other people I've been following online that are getting the camera and testing it out. And of course, the images look amazing on there. There's a lot of things in this camera that we all wish we could have in some of our cameras we have now. Um, that in-body stabilization, that 8K option, just a newer science to the camera, the way it's built with the V mount on the back, the XLRs in it. It's kind of what I would want in a FX6 Mark II. And in a video I did about maybe the ideas of an FX6 Mark II and actually the image I used on that thumbnail was from a Burana. But the big part for me to think about is as a business owner, as somebody who is a working professional, I do video full time. I work as a director of photography. I have a small video production company. Uh, I have other guys working with me, an editor, other people going out and shoot stuff and do stuff for a wide range of different clients. I do a lot of documentary style work, documentary work, branded content, and then just corporate events, corporate documentaries, corporate interviews, um, you know, company profiles, a lot of different things. As a business owner and somebody who's making a living doing this, is is this the right investment? Is this actually gonna make me money? And, or is this gonna make my life so much more easier that it's worthwhile getting that way? And what I mean by making my life so much more easier it's worthwhile, I would say something like the Sony FX6. I have two of these. Um, the reasons I have that, is not because clients are always asking me, Brian, do you have the FX6? Brian, you need you to have this camera. That very seldom happens. There's certain jobs where I get subcontracted on some doc shoots where they wanna know my kit, um, what cameras I have, what are the options that way. But I would say 90% of my clients have no clue. They have no clue about cameras. They really don't care. They just want an image to look a certain way and to be delivered in a certain way. I think there's a bunch of projects I could probably get away with shooting on, geez, like a camera from 10 years ago. I could probably still be using my Canon C100 for a bunch of the corporate stuff I do, delivering in 1080, and no one would know the difference and no one would ask me that. I invest in these things because I want to have a better camera and kind of for some of the other clients I do work with that they do ask for that, but also a camera that makes my life easier. So the built-in NDs, uh, the built-in XLRs, the configuration of the camera, the memory, being able to do some more slow motion, things that can be more creative with the camera. That, for me, makes my life easier and helps me do my job, and that way I can justify buying a new camera, not that I'm billing it out. There's very seldom jobs that I'm doing where people are asking me to price out my camera separately as a kit, so a lot of times some DPs will come out. Sometimes DPs just come out as a package themselves, or not a package, sorry, just themselves. It's their day rate and then they come out with, and they'll say, well, I need this camera, these lenses, I want this grip with me, I want this lighting with me, and that gets on, added on top of the rate. The way I work is I'm an owner operator, majority of the time, there's sometimes I do some work that way, but majority of the time, major majority of the time, I'm an owner operator, I'm coming out with a package, I'm coming out with my camera package, my lighting package, my grip package, my audio package, all of it, and they're getting me with my day rate with all that stuff, that's kind of how I work and my business has kind of been built. And it just kind of makes things easier for me with the other corporate and work that we do when we're doing full video productions. So getting into the value of the Burana, okay? So it is a four times more expensive than the Sony FX6. Four times more expensive. So it's in the US, it is 25,000 US. In Canada, it's 34 thousand dollars in the u.s the sony fx6 is going for six thousand dollars so this is a four times more expensive camera now is it four times better is it at four times a better image is it four times easier to work with is it four times you know worth it and for me i don't see that i don't see the image of being four times better and really, I think a lot of times when we're looking at these images, it's really us as video professionals that only ones that kind of see that big differences. Sometimes people can see differences in cameras, in resolutions, in 
you know, color profiles and a grade, but they don't really know what it is. Uh, we are the most critical to our working in our own images and other working professionals. Again, for me, majority of my clients have no clue. I mean, I can deliver something kind of a baked in look. I could shoot in as cine tone. I could deliver that way as a Rec 709. As long as it looks great and it kind of does the job for them, there's no questions that way. Yes, if something was all completely blown out and stuff like that, but I think the majority of cameras out now have you know 10 bit and can produce really great images. If you cannot produce good images off of whatever camera you have now, then buying a camera like a Barana is not worth it. It's not gonna make you that much better. That resolution isn't gonna make you a better cinematographer, a better videographer, it's not. You need to practice on your craft and what you're doing, learn how to expose things better, learn all these different things, how to frame things better. That's what's gonna make a big difference, not having the newest and greatest gear. And so that other thing with value of this camera too is, you know, a lot of people when they buy, say, a Red or they, they buy an Alexa, a lot of times what they've built into their business model is that when they come out, they're coming out with a package and then when they come out with that camera, that camera has its own cost to it. So the rental cost with that camera with themselves and that's how they justify that camera. And there's a lot of people and friends that I have that are doing more commercial work where they're asking for you know, a Red and an Alexa, specific camera, specific lensing. When I'm doing stuff again, people don't know what the hell I'm bringing out. They don't really care. So as long as it looks good again, I'm happy with it, they're happy with it, that's it. So for me, I couldn't really, for any of my clients, I'd say, again, 90% of my clients, I would not be able to charge extra because I'm coming out with a Barana, okay? If I'm coming on set with like, hey, guys, listen, I just got this, I'm coming to shoot some corporate interviews, I need you to pay me an extra $500 a day because that's what this camera costs now and this is what I'm shooting with. Majority of my clients, I know they won't pay for that and I that's why I kind of structure my budgeting my way I do my day rates that way. That's all one encompassing thing because a lot of people that I'm doing these work for don't understand that breakdown. It's like, why does the camera cost this much? What is this stuff? They really don't care again. So I'm not gonna recoup that money for this camera. It's gonna be a bad investment for me. Now, not saying I would never buy this camera, not at all. I mean, I would love to have the Barana. Don't get me wrong. I think it's an amazing camera. I think it has an amazing image. I just don't think it's four times better than FX6 or some of the other cameras, but I think it is an amazing camera. There's a possible documentary corporate kind of branded content series that could be a very high value, um, bigger deliverable thing that I might be working on this year. If that happened, I might partner with a Barana with a partner of mine that would be working on this project. That might make sense to have that. And that might be value to who we're doing this for. And there could be the certain type of people that we're working with on the project, they'd be like, hey, we want you to shoot on this camera or we want you to shoot on this camera. And that's discussing those things. That can be a factor for sure. But again, most of my work, that's not a factor. So that's why for me, it is not a value. And I think this is something going into more production and more beyond this camera, something for you to think about if you're trying to become a full-time video professional, if you're trying to do this as a living, we really need to think about what are the value is this? You know, is this bringing more value to my clients? Will they notice a difference? Is this making my life easier? Can I cover the costs of this? Can I charge more for this? And if the answer is no to some of these, then maybe this is not a right camera. A lot of times I think I just did a video on the FX30. That is a great camera. I could shoot, I could shoot probably I could shoot everything I shot last year on the FX30 and it'd be a great looking image. You know, maybe some low light issues in some places, but I could, I choose not to use that camera as much because I just don't like the configuration of it. I love built-in NDs. I love just having the kind of camera that feels like a camera. But otherwise, I think that's, you know, I could do just as well with that camera, which is way more cost efficient than an FX6 even. So it's something to think about with your business, how you're spending money, why you're buying gear. Don't get so consumed about gear. I love gear. As you can see from my channel, I love gear but I have to remind myself all the time that this is not what makes you better. This is not what makes a difference in your work. It really doesn't. It can help you in your work and make your life easier, but this does not make you a better cinematographer, a better videographer, because you have a better camera. So thanks so much, guys. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the Barana? Are you looking at getting one? What do you think for the value? What do you think is the best value for a video camera right now, for somebody coming up, starting out, 
Um, even somebody who's been working in the field for the last 20 years like myself, what do you think is the best camera to get right now for budget? And thanks so much guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please think of subscribing to the channel and we're gonna get some more content out for you guys very shortly.